I love me some Iron Man, and we're gonna talk about Iron Man 3 today. It's one of the most anticipated movies of the summer. It's the kickoff to Marvel Phase 2. It's the next movie after the Avengers. It's huge, and we're gonna talk about it all today on... First of all, in my opinion, Robert Downey Jr.'s interpretation of Tony Stark is one of the most highly successful interpretations of a comic book character to the big screen. Especially when you think about all these other comic book movies where like some characters like completely miss the mark and it's just kind of embarrassing. So as you can see from our slideshow, a lot of these comic book character translations to the big screen have totally missed the mark. They've been like really ridiculous. And that's why Iron Man is like so dear to me because it's one of the few shining examples of when they totally get it right. And it's so awesome when they finally do. Also, I'm drunk now after all that. <laughs> All right, so let's do a brief recap of all the movies that Iron Man's been a part of so far. So you have Iron Man 1, total success, super solid film. If you haven't watched it lately, go back and watch it. You'll find yourself being really fucking surprised because that movie holds up, all right? Jarvis, you there? At your service, sir. Engage heads up display. Check. And also, it took Robert Downey Jr. and Jon Favreau into like A-list status, as well as the character of Iron Man, because before that movie, Iron Man was like a C-list character, okay? And I don't care what you say, now he's a household name and everybody loves Iron Man, and that's awesome. Then you had Iron Man 2, which wasn't quite as successful as the first film. A lot of people were kind of eh about it. But I did you a big favor. I have successfully privatized world peace. <laughs> I like it, I think it's all right, but it, it could have been better. I and mean, we I think we all can agree on that. Then you have the Avengers, which was obviously a huge success. It brought all the excitement back. It established a world where superheroes exist, and it was just total fun, awesome, Good mega idea. success. To bring together a group of remarkable people. So when we needed them, they could fight the battles that we never could. Gentlemen, what are you prepared to do? So let's talk about the expectations we all had for Iron Man 3, especially after Avengers, which was super competent, which made us all believe that Marvel knows what the fuck they're doing at this point. They're making a lot of movies and finally they're like, in a groove. So we're expecting Iron Man 3 to be like a huge success. And that's why I was so excited to see Iron Man 3. And I'm really excited to see the first phase two Marvel movie because now we're past the origin story phase. Finally, after like 10 to 15 years, all we've been seeing is origin stories. And I'm glad that we're finally past that. I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm gonna cut to the chase. I'm a little disappointed with Iron Man 3. In fact, I'm more than a little disappointed with Iron Man 3. I'm very frustrated with this movie because you know what? I feel like there's such a good movie inside this movie. Like there's this great movie waiting to come out, but there's all these like stupid little surface flaws that totally like make you like, what? It's, it's like Prometheus in a lot of ways, you know? You know what I'm saying? I highly recommend you go see Iron Man 3 before watching the rest of this video, unless you want to spoil it for yourself. There's a lot of great things in the film, so I feel like you definitely should go see it because I really want to talk with you about it so you know what the fuck I'm talking about here, all right? You gotta go see it, and then we're gonna watch this. 
So the plot for this movie is based upon the extremist storyline from the comic books. It picks up after the events of the Avengers. Tony Stark can't sleep. He stays up all night tinkering on all these new Iron Man suits. Pepper Potts is running Stark Industries. Happy's gotten a promotion to the head of security. And Tony is like totally suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder because now like there's, he knows about all these other dimensions and aliens and it's totally crazy and he can't handle it. He's freaking out, man. Which is really good and added some vulnerability and some dimension to his character this time around. And that's the thing. Every single movie you want to add a little bit more dimension to a character. And I'm glad that they did this. They did a good job with it. Kind of. So let's talk about all the things that I liked about the movie. And there's a lot of things to like in Iron Man 3. I did really enjoy the opening scene that was set in the 90s and it had like the blue song and all that shit. And like everybody had a really good look. It was very 90s. I really enjoyed it, especially after seeing Pain and Gain, which had terrible like 90s stuff going on. It's like, I don't even know why they even bothered. It didn't even look like the 90s at all. You can't just put a fanny pack on someone and expect me to think it's the fucking 90s. I really enjoyed the way Happy looked. He was all Pulp Fiction. That was hilarious. I really liked all the different types of Iron Man armor going on. I thought that was a lot of fun. Every single Iron Man movie just looks better and better. Like kudos to all the artists who came up with all these fabulous designs. They looked fantastic. My only regret was that I couldn't see them more because they were always like flying by the screen so fast. There were also a lot of genuinely funny lines. I laughed a lot in this movie. Robert Downey Jr. was hilarious as usual. Um, so was Jon Favreau. Even Gwyneth Paltrow. I hate Gwyneth Paltrow, but she's really good as Pepper Potts and she was even funny in it. I really love how they set up Tony Stark's character in the beginning of the film, how he hasn't slept in 72 hours he's like acting all weird and shit like that was really well done i really enjoyed that the scene with him testing out the armor was a lot of fun it's always a lot of fun seeing tony stark like test out his iron man suits and this was no exception and i would say one of my favorite things was the modular iron man suit that was definitely the star of the show it had a lot of creative ideas going on it was really fun and interesting i love how tony stark had to like inject himself with all these little chips so he could like bring it to him that was really cool i also enjoyed how when he got stuck underwater and then like the hand came off and then it came back and it helped him out that was really cool there was a lot of really fun ideas going on here you could tell that the people behind the scenes were having a lot of fun working on these like crazy designs and one of the most exciting things for me was seeing all these clever things that the armor could do and it really matched the cleverness of Tony Stark like I believe that he came up with all these like weird ideas of what he could do with the suit. And that's something we've never seen in the movies before. They really upped the ante with what all the suits could do. It was really fun to see, and it was always very surprising, too. And all these ingenious little things that he comes up with for the armors makes him a real hero, because, like, all these inventions are so badass. There was also really great suspense going on in this film. There were several times where I'm like, oh, gosh, like, I'm really worried. Like, how is this going to end? Like, man. Good suspense. Even though I didn't necessarily like the kid character going on in the film, I think Robert Downey Jr. did a really great job of playing off of him. And the reason the scenes with the kid are even tolerable is because of Robert Downey Jr. He did a really great job handling that whole deal. I'm sure he was bummed that he had to work with a stupid kid. I would be. There's a lot of really great acting going on. There was a lot of really great performances. Robert Downey Jr., as always, killed it. He does such a great job as Tony Stark, as usual. I mean, I don't even have to say, I shouldn't even have to say that. We all just know it at this point. Also, I would have to say that the Mandarin was really fucking interesting and I really like that. And I know that a lot of people out there are probably gonna disagree with me on this and I understand why you're disagreeing with me on this, but I would say that the twist and you find out that he's really this actor and he's not really like this fucking guy, I thought that was brilliant. I didn't see it coming, it was interesting, it was fresh. So my favorite thing about Iron Man 3 was the setup for the premise of the plot that takes place in the first scene in the movie back in the 90s when Tony Stark is pre-Iron Man. He's like a drunk asshole going around trying to get pussy all the time. And like he ends up creating his own villain later by rejecting Killian Aldrich, who he doesn't even remember. This guy ends up dedicating his life to try to take down Tony Stark out of revenge. And I'm sure he's like, that guy's a dick. And then Tony Stark turns into Iron Man and he's like, fuck that guy. Like he's fucking Iron Man now like just gets better and better for Tony Stark, huh? Well, somebody's gonna take him down and that's gonna be me. So it's an interesting envy revenge plot. I really appreciated that. All in all, this set up a great idea for an Iron Man movie. And I will say, hands down, the first act of this movie is fantastic. It's so fucking solid. And it's like, I got to see this movie twice. So the second time around, I kind of got to like see how the audience reacted to it. And everybody was fucking on board, man, for that first act. Everyone, man, it was just so good. I think everything was great. Right up until he meets the kid.
for me, here's what the movie felt like. It felt like you had this like really nice drawing and it was like really good. And then like some other assholes come in. They're like, no, nah, I'm just, I need to redraw the nose real quick. And then they redraw it and it looks totally fucking weird. Okay. It just seems like there was a really competent film going on here. And then we had this too many cooks in the kitchen scenario because Iron Man 3 is like a huge fucking moneymaker at this point. So you have all these producers coming in, coming with their stupid fucking opinions and ruining what could have been a great film. That's what I feel is going on. And I feel pretty confident that that is what happened in this film. <laughs> So there's two types of problems with an Iron Man 3. Problems that I can forgive, and then there's problems that are just too huge to ignore. So let's start by getting into problems that are there, but I can totally give it a pass. So we need to talk about the Extremis virus guys. All right, so my problem with these villains are that their powers are really like undefined and they're and they're like more powerful than you think they might be, but then you don't know, like sometimes they blow up and you don't know why and it's just like, it's bizarre. You don't know how to feel about them. And then they're all like ex-veterans who had their arms blown off in like fucking Afghanistan. So if they're so powerful and they can just like beat up Iron Man like that, then why don't they just, I don't know, take over the whole government or something by themselves? Why do they need this elaborate conspiracy like Mandarin plot? The plot and their power is a contradiction of themselves. And it's very cartoonish in a lot of ways. Like the way things just like arms like magically grow back in like two seconds. And it's just like, they always do that with CGI. And it's just, just be subtle. You could be subtle about it. It. It'll look great and it'll look more realistic if you're subtle if they like just a little bit of glow here and there These motherfuckers don't need to look like a fucking glow worm all the time Okay, but I can forgive it because it doesn't necessarily ruin the storyline. I can turn a blind eye to it So another thing that I thought was really weird was the Austin Powers credit sequence at the end of the film uh, It looks like maybe somebody was trying to go for like a comic book style And then somehow it just ended up looking like Austin Powers because they don't know what the fuck they're doing <laughs> It was really weird. I, I don't know what it was. It didn't. It didn't seem to fit anything, like tone-wise. Spy who shagged me. <laughs> I didn't like how the Mark 42 modular suit just fell apart really easily. I found that disturbing. And I understand that Jarvis says in the beginning, oh, it's a prototype, it's not battle ready. And then later on, it's, and they're also making Tony Stark into an underdog. So like he has this faulty suit. I get it but I feel like this decision was made more for comedic effect than anything, like plot-wise. It's like, yeah, it was funny, but I, it really did disservice to itself in the end. So another thing that was weird and extremely unnecessary was the whole Christmas deal. I feel like this movie did not need to be set at Christmas time. I felt that was extremely unnecessary. I know it's some sort of weird trademark of Shane Black, but I don't care. It's May, I don't wanna see Christmas. We have three months, three months of Christmas every year, fucking, Leave it out of my summer movies, thank you. Plus, it feels like some marketing scheme to like, when Christmas comes around, they wanna like put these out at Christmas, mark my words, and then everyone's gonna be like, oh, it's a great Christmas movie because it's at Christmas time. And like, they're just trying to sell it at Christmas. Dude, they are trying to sell you shit at Christmas in May, okay? Like these assholes are just always thinking about Christmas. It's like the biggest fucking fuck fest of the year advertising. I'm not against Christmas, okay? I'm not against the idea of Christmas, but what I am against is just how Christmas is taking over the entire fucking year, okay? Thanksgiving's already lost the war, okay? November is already lost to fucking Christmas. And you know what? Halloween's next, all right? Halloween is next. They put up Christmas decorations the night of Halloween. I remember at the grocery store at Ralph's. It sickens me. I don't need it for three months. I need it for one month and that's it. I hate that Christmas has turned into this big fucking corporate greed deal and those songs, it's the same 10 fucking songs every year. I don't care if Mariah Carey sings it or Justin Bieber sings it or Usher sings it. I don't care, I don't wanna hear it. I don't wanna hear it. I don't wanna hear it. So that was a list of a few things that didn't ruin the movie for me. They didn't ruin the story overall. I could turn a blind eye to them. But now we need to talk about the things that fucking did ruin the goddamn story that like, that you just know some fucking asshole executive came in and fucking rewrote on there and just ruined this goddamn script that was probably really fucking good and I wish I could read the original one. Anyways, let's talk about them. These stupid problems are so fucking stupid that they make me wanna fucking explode like I'm a goddamn extremist weirdo. So the film started off really great. The first act was super solid. I felt really excited both times I saw the movie during the first act. But then you get the second act and he goes to Tennessee and you're like, uh, and then the kid comes in and you're like, uh, and it's like kind of 
hit and miss. And then you get to the third act, which turns into a complete mess and it turns into this like giant Spider-Man plot. So an idea that started off really interesting but devolved into a thing that ended up ruining the movie overall was the remote controlled Iron Man suit. Now at first, it's like, okay, I can get behind it. Like Tony's like, he's controlling it from afar. All right, I can get behind that, cool. And then you see it later and he calls to it and it's subconscious. Like that's a really interesting idea that went nowhere. And then at the very end, like you have all the suits come out and they're not being remote controlled anymore. They're like completely autonomous and can like kick ass on their own and are doing even better than Iron Man's doing and kicking more ass than he ever did. And it's like really takes away from Tony's heroism. And it's like, why do these guys even need Iron Man? Why does Iron Man even need to do, do anything when he can just have like fucking these guys fucking autonomous flying around kicking ass for him? It's a problem that ruins your emotions in the movie. Like, like again, it's like you just don't know how to feel here. Which leads us to the movie's biggest problem is that the audience's emotions are completely mishandled. In the ending, we have, first off, the drones flying in to save the day and like start kicking all this ass. Then we have Tony Stark fucking drops Pepper Potts, drops the ball on that one. He she fucking lets her die. And then, so we have the main bad guy go up against him and then he gets his ass kicked by Killian, okay? Like just totally getting ruined by this guy. And then Pepper Potts comes back in from the fire because she's got extremists. And then she like delivers the death blow to the villain. Pepper Potts comes in and just easily defeats him with this ridiculous like flip move and kicking a bullet and a fucking, I don't even know what that was, completely robbing Tony Stark of any like heroism, okay? It's just, I, the movie's called Iron Man 3, not Pepper Potts and Drones 3, okay? And then in the end, he like gives up being Iron Man or something and throws away his little chest thing. It's very deflating and it just makes you feel bad. It's just not a great ending. It's not a feel good ending at all. And which leads us to the biggest problem of the movie is that the audience's emotions are completely mishandled. They don't seem to understand how we feel about Tony Stark. They don't know how to make us feel about Tony Stark. It's extremely awkward. And like I said, completely mis mishandled. Like I'm going to this movie to go see Tony Stark fucking kick ass, take names and be a motherfucking hero and be more than a man. He was, that did not happen. I was bummed out. It's like not the ending I wanted. And I know a lot of people out there on the internet are like, oh, they just empowered Pepper Potts and made her into a hero and that's great. And I'm here to tell you no, okay? I'm a woman and that ain't fucking female empowerment. I know it when I see it and that ain't it. That's fake female empowerment, and worse than that, it's bad storytelling. It felt like, but isn't quite like a deus ex machina situation where a story element that just comes into play out of nowhere that has nothing to do with anything and resolves things. Tony Stark had no hand in his own fate at the end, you know? And it's, it just it wasn't satisfying. So let's talk about the kid for a minute. What a huge misstep in the film. Did anybody like that kid? Like, uh, I mean, he had a couple funny lines here and there, whatever. Robert Downey Jr. did a great job of like making the most out of those scenes, but it felt really forced, okay? It's like they're trying to give Iron Man a little kid sidekick buddy, and that is not what anyone is coming to this movie to see, okay? That's, it's wrong. It feels wrong. It makes you feel weird. And it's like you're watching it and you think to yourself, well, maybe it's just like a passing thing, but then he's in the next scene and then he's in the next scene and then he's in the next scene and it's just too much. It's like this. When the kid enters the film, it's like, you know, the kid isn't going to die. You know that like nothing that gnarly is going to happen. And it just sucks all the drama out of the movie when you have the kid in there, because now you know that this is a PG affair and it's like, oh man. Let's and the kid didn't ruin the movie, but it was just like insult to injury. Really, the real reason why they put the kid in there was because Marvel is owned by Disney and Disney loves that kid market and that's what they make all their money off of. And like, that's why they put them in there and I just don't want to see it. I don't know, neither do you. Nobody wants to see it. It's nefarious, it's wrong. Like, and the whole thing felt forced in there, which leads me to my biggest conclusion about the Iron Man 3 movie is that it's such a competent film in a lot of places that when you see these weird odd things that just don't fit in it, that seem forced, it just makes you believe that you had a decent movie and that some executive people, I don't know, producers, whatever, too many cooks in the kitchen came in and messed it up. I botched that one. Oh, that's a botched job. 
And that's really unfortunate because the Iron Man movies one and two are both pretty decent. The first one's really, really good. Second one's all right. It could have been better, whatever. Studio interference on the second. We didn't even talk about that. I believe that this movie was compromised. I believe that there was a solid script at some point along the way and that some shit went down and then Disney executives came in and forced all this shit into the plot and ruined the movie. Like they gave it all these stupid little surface problems. Suppose you have a problem with that too. Ah, oh, oh, botched, oh. I botched that one. I'm telling you, this movie is too smart to be making such dumb mistakes. Instead of letting the director make a great Iron Man movie, they got greedy and tried to make a movie for everyone because they wanted to make as much money as they possibly could. <laughs> So this concludes our part one of our Iron Man 3 review, where we really dissect the movie and go into why, like, things weren't working. And then we have a second part coming where I talk about all the conspiracies and my theories behind why this movie was ruined. We'll go a little bit more into the details of all the politics behind Iron Man 3. It's going to be very interesting, informative. I could totally be wrong. I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'd like to make a public apology to the Disney executives who will likely blacklist me from the industry. Also, I could be wrong. I heard one and a half hours of this film were cut, so it could have been that the filmmakers lost focus towards the end. Or Disney corporate greed. To the fans of Iron Man 3, I want you to know that I am not trying to rip this movie apart just for the sake of it. I personally hate it when people do that. That is not my intention. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on my opinions on Iron Man 3. And that is fine. If you loved Iron Man 3, then I don't want you to let me or anyone else take that away from you because loving something is awesome. All that I'm saying is that you may have been robbed of an even better movie, possibly for the sake of corporate greed. That's the only reason I'm doing this. I don't want all the future of comic book movies to be ruined because of greed. And at this time, I would like to remind you all to like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and finally, I would like to announce that I am Danica. Tony Stark wants you to donate to the Combo Girl 19 Kickstarter. That's how Dad did it. That's how America does it. It has worked out pretty good so far. <laughs>